uh, I thought it'll be interesting to make a film about the hostel life. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's fascinating. I had tons of anecdotes about that. So I started like that. Mm-hmm. But then again, my belief in the education, the belief that, okay, education shouldn't be like this. Well, I was a very average mm-hmm. student growing up in Nagpur. When I was a very average student, uh, I did science till 12th. Couldn't get into engineering college. I didn't even know why I wanted to get into engineering college because it was a custom. People were either getting into medicine or engineering. I started doing my commerce, again, average. Finally, when I got into a film school, is mm. I realized this is giving me joy. This is tremendous. And I started getting a scholarship and I started really enjoying it. So there was a certain belief that education should be like that. So probably that seeped into the film. So mm. it's never been an intention to, you know, uh, uh, make a film which is socially like that. It just seeps in. Yeah, and I think this is a, this is a good... Uh... Leaning, this is good. Leaning into the into the next question, which is, uh, I, I read something that Peter Jackson, the the Lord of the Rings creator, uh, wrote. He said, uh, "The most honest form of filmmaking is making a film for yourself." And when I read that, I remembered that you have said a lot of it in your interviews as well, that you make films for yourself, not for audiences, because it's it's difficult to please a vast, diverse uh, set of audiences and their likes and tastes, but. But that that therein lies a paradox. So when you make a film, it just it elicits such a deep emotional response uh, oh. from India, China to the West, and not just Indian audiences, <laughs> right? So it's not uh, it's not like it's uh, it's it's the taste of the land. Hence, Indians are only liking it. It's very universal. Uh, how do you uh, tell us a little about making films for yourself versus an audience, and how does that influence uh, your genre, the stories you choose to narrate? Um, and your process. You know, it's very strange. <clears throat> this question always comes up whenever I'm talking to any business school. It <laughs> always comes up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in a different way, in different uh, uh, these things. Uh, people want to know what are the, you know, what are the benchmarks to make a successful film like that. But, you know, uh, the cinema business is actually very different. Mm. Uh, I think there are two, two pillars to it. One is the creative side, hmm. which is writing, making, editing, creating a, if you may call it in a business school, a product. Hmm. And the other side is business of it. Hmm. And, and there are two, typically the two different people doing this. Hmm. One will be, a, will be a writer, director, or a director with a vision and with the support of a team trying to portray his vision out. After that is done, then it's the job of another person to put it out into the world, see how much business it does and everything it does. Hmm. You know, you cannot treat cinema like a product, actually. I feel you cannot treat. Hmm. It's not a soap, it's not an oil, it's not a toothpaste. Where What happens with a typical product is you create a product, if it's good, it's there for life. You know, people will use a particular toothpaste for life. Hmm. You can do minor variations to it and somebody can use it for life. Cinema is consumed once. You make it. Hmm. In three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, it's over and out. Then you have to create mm-hmm. something else. So if you're creating a product, um, or you might see a product which is working. So you might mm-hmm. sit in the conference room and say, oh, this product is working. Let's pick up some elements from here. The fragrance from here. Let's pick up the packaging from here. Let's put this all together and create something similar, market it in a different way and it'll work. In cinema, it doesn't work like that. It's actually harmful. Because if a film has worked, and if you try to copy it again, it's already done with it. Why would somebody want to see something which has been out, already there? <clears throat> so you, with cinema, you have to think completely differently. Hmm. And I strongly believe that you actually cannot think what people will like. Hmm. What somebody in Bihar will like versus what somebody sitting in Boston will like to somebody sitting in Jammu and Kashmir will like. You cannot. And if you try to please somebody like that, it's just not putting a little fragrance here and there. Cinema is a very cohesive, organic storytelling. It's a story. You're telling a story. You can't say, okay, I'm going to put a little action here, which people in Bihar will like. Okay, they might like that action. But it's a three-hour story. What about the action will get over in five, ten minutes? What about the other two hours, 30 minutes? Mm. Somebody will like a comic scene somewhere, loud scene. Somebody will like subtlety somewhere. So you can't make 
an anecdotal film where you put 20 different anecdotes to please everybody. It has to be a cohesive one unit. And so the best thing is to not try to figure out what people like. Understand that you are also an audience. You also have a certain liking. Go with your liking. And if you're lucky, if your liking is, I would say, universal in that way, great. If it is not, I'm saying still it's okay. A certain section will like your liking. At least the film will be pure. There will be some purity mm -hmm. to the film. If you try to please somebody else, you cannot judge what they really like and then you'll make up a hodgepodge of a film. Mm -hmm. So you might like horror, great. There will be a certain section of people who like the horror. You might make the best horror film. Mm -hmm. But if you're saying, no, no, somebody likes horror, somebody likes comedy, let me put all together in one film and please everybody. I don't think you can do that. So, mm -hmm. so what I do is actually, I go with my gut feel that I'm laughing when I'm writing this. I'm crying when I'm writing this line. So I go with my gut. But at the same time, I do narrate the script even before making to lots of people. And mm. primarily non-film related people. Mm. Uh, because they are more pure in their emotion. They haven't lost the innocence of watching films. What happens when you narrate a film to or a script uh, to film people, they start putting yastics. Like I remember in three idiots, everybody asked me, uh, at what point Karina comes in? I said it was 40th minute. Ah, oh, that's too late. Your heroine can, cannot come at 40th minute. Where is your mm. plot point coming? So you get technical about it. Whereas mm. a regular, a non-film person goes with his emotion. So you have to narrate it to non-film people. See how are they reacting to it. See mm. if they don't like something. Then you have to delve into it. Okay, why are they not liking, liking it? Mm. You have to mm. analyze it. Maybe you've not been able to communicate. Something is in your head, in your mind. Which has not come out. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a it's a to and fro process, and and writing is a complex process. It's not a simple process. So because you have to say so many things in so many layers, uh, so it's a process which takes its own sweet time. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, I still attempt to uh, uh, say that go with your gut feel rather than trying to judge mm -hmm. what others will like. You might fail. You might fail. What happens? Certain films will automatically have more resonance. Like if you, uh, uh, you know, few us down, somebody asked me, which is your most unique film? And I said, uh, uh, or what do you think will stay forever? I said, you never know, nothing stays forever. But I used to think that Lagero Munna Bhai is a very unique film. A concept like where you taking a fictional character like Munna Bhai and a, a, a real character like Gandhiji and putting them together, which I've not seen in any film. So I thought it's a very unique film and I thought this would stay forever. People would not stay forever, but this will stay for a longer time. Over time mm. now, now it's been 10, 15 years to all those films. Whenever I meet people, I feel they find more resonance with Three Idiots. And mm. to me, Three Idiots was always a very regular story. It was a fun story, but regular story. But it found more resonance, possibly for the simple reason that it was talking about something, an education system which affected everybody's life. When it affects mm. your life and you see that on screen, you find resonance with it. Mm. You see yourself there and you feel, ah, so that, that stayed longer. Whereas three mm. just is a, like it was a very unique story. So mm. you can't prejudge what people are going to find resonance with. You can't judge. You have to go with your gut and mm. think for the best. You know, I have some experience in filmmaking and I wonder a lot of things about a lot yeah. of people in the industry. But what I wonder the most is it's it's a very it's a person it's a question that I've I've been very curious about. Is mm. that you know, when I saw your interviews, you said that I only wanted to come to Bombay and make one film and show mm. it to my friends and family. And there was this honesty and curiosity of a of a young filmmaker that you had. Mm. Success after success. I'm sure you've asked been asked this question a lot, but success after success, how do you balance the pressure of expectation versus uh, versus the curiosity and honesty of a first-time filmmaker? You know, yeah, the, I can't tell you the... See, uh, actually every film, every time you start making a film, it's like the first time. It's mm. the same amount of challenges in terms of writing, same amount of challenges at shooting, same amount of challenges uh, uh, in the post. So, when you're making it, it's always the first film. It's, it's None of that gets reduced. But uh, possibly the joy that your first film gives you is tremendous because uh, anybody wants to make a film, anybody who's come from a small town to this city with, you know, 
wanting to make that one film uh that joy when that film is over is is beyond anything because you know that time you're not really worrying about the box office success of that film the numbers of that film you just want to make a film you want your friends to see it you want your family to see it uh, uh you want them to like the film of course likability is a strong thing you you whenever you do anything i think for any artist be it a musician or a painter or anybody whatever you're creating you want it to be liked so mm. so so i still remember when munna bhai mbbs released it didn't even cross my mind to check figures of what business is doing in the morning it didn't didn't even cross my mind i went to sleep because pre release this tremendous amount of work happens and friday it released and i you know normally i was waking up at 7 i said today i can sleep till afternoon around 12 o'clock uh one of my assistants woke me up and said he called me and he said arey let's let's go to the theaters and see the how the what's the kind of business is doing or how people are reacting to it not the you didn't even say business just let's see how people are reacting to it and i should have i never thought of it but i was happy my family had seen my parents had seen and my friends had seen i was happy ah they're liking the film i'm happy i think i've got what i wanted then i remember running to the theater walking to the theater and there used to be this gatekeeper at gate cinema Uh, uh, I knew because I used to go and watch films, but he didn't know I'd made this film. It was my first film, so I asked him how's the film, and he did this. My heart sank, and I ran inside the auditorium and uh, quietly stood in the corner and started watching. It was post interval that one scene was going on where this old man is playing, Papa Ji is playing carrom board, and the coin goes inside, and the and the audience was fifty percent, but they were cheering, they were clapping. I said, why is this guy saying this film is bad? Then it occurred to me he doesn't care. <laughs> the film is good for him. Is doing fifty percent business, and he can't sell his tickets in black. Those days, all <laughs> tickets used to be sold in black outside theaters. So possibly it meant nothing to him. So then I said, no, no, people are liking it. And then we traveled from one theater to the other. Then I remember calling Baman. Uh, Baman, as you just pointed out, become a great friend, and he still is. So I called him. Took him to I think it was New Empire. Made him stand outside the theater when the show started. Uh, in the after post interval, I took him into that same scene where the carrom board scene was happening. I made him stand behind me, so quietly standing there. And the scene happened. That coin went inside the carrom board, and people started cheering. And suddenly, I hear this sobbing. One big man behind me sobbing. Turned, but I was crying like crazy. It was his first film also. Then we came out and saw one house full board, and so that joy was something else. Joy for first film. Now you, uh, 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 you. I have to confess that you do worry that you want your film to do well. You wanted to. You made people invest huge amount of monies into it, so you want that money to be recovered. You investing more than you did in your first film. So, so you do worry about. Uh, uh, that time there was no. You didn't care what people will think about you. What it, it didn't matter. So, hmm. so somewhere you lose that innocence of or the joy of your first film. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a hard balance to strike especially in your position i can imagine but i think just shifting gears a little bit i i want to try and talk about your role in a in a larger industry um i i'm just curious if you could steer the industry the indian film industry overall in whichever way where you wanted over the next decade or two the theme of this conference is india 2030 So, if you could fear, steer the Indian film industry, the entertainment and storytelling industry over the next uh, decade, uh, what where would you like to see it go, and how, and what do you think we need to fix immediately? See, as I just said, uh, uh, as a filmmaker, or anybody working on the film, from actors to technicians to anybody, uh, what you want when you create a film is that more and more people see it. so obviously you want your film to travel more uh, which started happening with china actually our films earlier would be primarily in india or couple of markets which were again diaspora markets were like usa uk dubai all those places then it started traveling to china and started doing big business mm-hmm. in china so it was a joy uh, going there and uh, i still whenever i meet some people from china korea Taiwan and they start talking about three idiots. So it gives you tremendous joy that ah they've seen your film. So obviously you want your films to travel to Hollywood, all those places. But again, I don't think these things uh, 
can really be planned and this thing these things happen organically hmm. and and it will happen eventually what what has happened now with ott platforms coming in hmm. uh we are watching each other's films of course we watched hollywood here but now i guess they are watching our films in mumbai now in a hindi belt we are watching south films hmm. why this happened this was this happened in during this period in the pandemic where hmm. people were in their hmm. homes apart from seeing hindi films they would switch over and see what other films are available Mm. So a film like Pushpa, if you would have heard a film like Pushpa, which is from, mm. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a Telugu film. It's done exceedingly well in Hindi. Mm. In a dubbed version, it's done better than many other Hindi films. Mm. And that is happening because people are watching now these films on OTT platforms. People are watching Spanish films, French films here. So similarly, I guess, uh, also when you watch each other's films, you. you get to know more about their culture their ethos and uh, those lines start getting blurred you don't look you know uh, uh, mm. it's not the you know there was a time actually when there was no ott or uh, 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 even no tv mm. if you look at a nation it was very different in the way it dressed up you go to rajasthan people would dress up differently you go to uh, uh, the mountains you go to manali or something people would dress up differently with the coming mm. of television what happened this all those characters dressed up in a particular way then i mm-hmm. remember i used to notice during rekhi is that now people have started dressing up very similar to each other because they're seeing the same mm-hmm. television shows they're watching the same things mm-hmm. so so lines start getting blurred i don't know whether it's good or bad but so when you watch each other's cinema when you start you understand each other's culture mm-hmm. ethos better then mm-hmm. i then i think you are able to also reach out to them better so these things will happen on its own organically will happen that uh, um some will some film will come and strike the mm-hmm. right chords out there and they'll watch a cinema more so so of course it does require a certain amount of marketing making sure that it reaches them which we have attempted in the past with some films it's been done it's not that people have always thought okay this is going to be the breakthrough film which is going to you know take mm-hmm. us to that market people have tried that but eventually i feel it is the content if your content is good enough it will it will find a path it will reach there automatically mm-hmm. is going to drill down on that point a little more yeah for sure <laughs> to try and elicit a more uh, non diplomatic answer from you no it's not the right answer i mean no no i get like that, that. <laughs> uh, you know I, i i i think i was discussing this with you earlier also that when we speak mm. when traditionally we used to talk about uh, the soft power of bollywood it would be an actors fan base and an actors reach i think ever since lage raho munna bhai three idiots that has changed from uh, from uh, that 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 has been a point i think a, a, a paradigm shift in that the film the content is bigger than big, bigger than the actor uh, in your film have you tried to uh, have you tried to consciously navigate that because you work with very big stars also in that the star or the actor should not overtake the film it's about the content so no, bollywood I travels more been... widely bollywood travels yeah, more yeah. widely no you know uh, you know somebody you can't you uh, you don't plan things like that but but oh this should be stronger that should be i am a strong believer that your foundation of your film is your story to me the script is the most important thing and that's why i take so much of time a couple of years to write and then make it and if the foundation is weak nothing can stand on it uh, uh star can take it to only till a point uh, beyond that it can't so i strongly believe that story is the crux but obviously i have not planned it like that oh i'm going to make content very strong and no you don't plan things like that i i cannot go to a shoot if i if i feel on paper my script is not working or my particular scene is not working i get very edgy i can't go to the shoot i feel start getting you know anxiety and uh, so so i i never saw it the way you're saying is that it's become like that i never saw <laughs> that uh, uh you perceive that content of this film is stronger like that to me it's a story and that's the way it is to be told mm-hmm. so uh, uh, i don't know how to <laughs> answer this <laughs> but if you were to uh, so if you were to sort of look back uh mm-hmm. you know at your at your career nearly 20 years now from from munna bhai to to sanju um 
how have how have you changed as a as a filmmaker and what has stayed the same so if you were to with the benefit of hindsight do something differently uh if you're starting over what would that be you know uh, uh um, yeah it's almost yeah it's 19 years now i've been making films and i've just made five films actually yeah. my sixth i'll start been starting now and uh, so and the reason i've done that is because i've been i want to write and uh, uh, feel very confident about my script before i go on the sets mm. so if at all yeah i can go back in life and if some certain things i can change is i would wish that i could understand scripting much earlier in my life and possibly in my college day if i could have started focusing more on script writing and had created a mm. lot of scripts because that is what mm. takes time execution doesn't take that much time if there's clarity of thought what you exactly want to do then execution is not a difficult issue then it's just replicating because the story is in your it's so much seeped into your mind that mm. once you're on the sets you have too much of clarity of thought that okay this is what you want this is what you don't want so mm. as a director what's happening with you on the sets is everybody's got questions right from mm. costumes to set design to actors asking questions about the characters about how to take mm. this shot uh uh how music should be everything but mm. when you delved enough in the script mm. then these things are very quick you can get mm. only you can get confused if you're not there's no clarity on the script mm. so yeah if you ask me that i wish i could have started writing much earlier in my life though i went to a film school but i uh, specialized in editing yet uh, uh didn't pay much attention to scripting then it's only when i came to mumbai that i realized that why would somebody make a film with me uh, mm. what do i have to offer i had i didn't know anyone and uh, uh only way they'll make a film with me if i can come with a great script so then i started kind of delving into books and trying to understand what script writing is about learning mm. how to do it and i said okay if i go to them with a great script and they feel okay this is a good script this guy has written possibly he can make a good mm. film so mm. i wish this had happened early in my life but uh, mm. that's just a this thing i have no regrets Yeah. Life has been kind. <laughs> um, you know, Rahul has asked an asked a question, and I think it just sort of delves deeper into something we were speaking about earlier. I'll I'll read it out, but he he basically says that films like PK have been you know targeted by religious organizations and groups um, to stall the movie's release. And uh, does that hinder your thought process while narrating stories? Does that really change? uh you know how your vision or or staying true to the subject matter even in the face of such provocation see what happens is uh when you i think strongly believe uh uh in what you're saying i think you become a little stupid i feel sometimes <laughs> i'll uh when i was making lagero munna bhai i remember a friend who came on the set and there was a scene where uh, arshad varsi and uh, sanju both are drunk and gandhi ji is there and uh, sanju is telling arshad that you know bapu ko bolo ghar jao to arshad opens drunk opens the door of a taxi and he says bapu ghar jane ka bhi jyada bar nahi ghumne ka aankh ke niche dark circle padta hai raat ko nahi ghumne ka so that was being shot now this friend of mine would come on the sets He saw this, and he looked at me, and he sat down. He said, "Are you mad? What are you doing? This is Gandhi ji. He's the father of the nation, and you are. What are you showing? Trust yeah. me. Till then, it had not even crossed my mind. I said, you know, somebody yeah. had even crossed my mind that I am doing something drastic. I said, no. Eventually, I am making a film, which is saying that, uh, which is in a way saying that believe in Gandhi ji, which is saying that believe in his values of non-violence and truth. So mm. it didn't even cross my mind, but. once he said it then i started thinking am i doing something wrong mm. so so i think you become a little stupid when you very strongly believe in it you don't you stop worrying about what the mm. world is going to think so in both these films i get this is what happened even when i was doing pk i strongly believed that uh, uh uh to me you people can have a different point of view but to me uh, what i've tried to say in the film that i saw god differently it god didn't mean mm. the way we see god is not there i do believe there's a certain mm-hmm. amount of some power which mm-hmm. we don't understand we are too small in the scheme of things to understand that but mm-hmm. 
but the way we perceive god that's not god to me god has been associated mm-hmm. with money and business and fake godments so that was mm-hmm. a saying and i was very strongly i strongly believed in it in fact i wanted mm-hmm. to make a documentary about it because mm-hmm. in a fiction film i realized i won't be able to say all that i want to say it's a fine balance mm-hmm. you have to strike between entertaining and right reaching so mm-hmm. uh, so i went pretty fearlessly in it and of course those little bit of controversies happened later yeah so i guess if you're strongly believing it you go with your gut mm. yeah mm. so there is this there is a sort of um, you know uh, understanding sometimes in audiences i'm i'm mm. going off of a question gitanjali has asked on the qa board which is that mm. sometimes hollywood films seem realistic and bollywood seems a little exaggerated uh, with the stunt sequences and all um i i have always been curious that this obviously hollywood is is bigger in in terms of the uh, in 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 certain metrics and aspects i'm just curious what do you think hollywood can learn from us from our film industry songs and dance <laughs> <laughs> see first of all uh, this question of real and unreal is uh, uh, when you look at a spider man is obviously not real when you look at superman when you look at the marvel films is obviously not real mm-hmm. so so the great thing is about cinema is that you can make anything you want you can make a very realistic film you can make fantasies you can make adventure films they could be real they could be unreal you can jump into the mind of somebody you can make animation films you can make a fish speak so it's got nothing to do with reality it's how that film is able to reach you how it's able to convince you that's mm. it so mm. it's never reality it's it's never reality in its true sense even the most real film is never truly real real in that sense it's just a perception of mm. reality and i think mm. every film it's like every filmmaker has a right to do what he likes he or she likes you know they can make what kind of cinema you want and there's a audience for you might differ somebody might not like uh 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 what you call the typical uh, uh commercial films uh, mm. song dance this thing but there's another section that likes it so mm. so absolutely there's no harm in it so somebody can yeah. there's a certain section of audience that likes it somebody will like very realistic films where somebody mm. might find that very boring that oh god they're taking so long pauses to say something they're walking from this place yeah. to another place there's so much of so it's a it's a matter of individual it's like food yeah somebody mm-hmm. might like chinese somebody might like italian somebody might like indian so everybody is to his own choice and you can pick and choose it's like reading a mm-hmm. book you can choose what you like so so i'm never against anything i say cinema making is a difficult process everybody's a, a doer i feel everybody makes a film good or bad is mm-hmm. a doer you know so please mm-hmm. i i never go and criticize that ah this film is somebody's put in the effort gone out there and now it's open to public people will ridicule it people will make fun of it but appreciate the person who's made it and everybody has a right to do what they want what they want to do this is a great question that has come in um i wish it's from an anonymous attendee i wish they would have put their name uh but it's it's something uh, it's 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 something worth thinking about as to how much does the how much you typically end up changing the original script based on what you hear from people um or what you see on the set versus what is acted out so you know you have these three unique roles in that you write you direct and you edit as well yeah. so in those sort of three processes how much does uh, yeah. does a film and its execution change yeah and it's an interesting question a lot of people ask me this um <clears throat> see first i actually work a lot on the script so i explore every option possible this can happen this can happen this can happen i actually over prepare then when i go on the sets i actually don't necessarily stick to the script hmm. uh i uh, give the option to the actors to others to now explore further on this hmm. uh because if somebody is coming up with a great line on the sets why should i hmm. stop it hmm. but the advantage of over preparing is that very quickly if somebody comes up with a great line very quickly you know that this is going to help or this is going to be detrimental to the film 
Mm-hmm. Somebody might come mm-hmm. up with, or you might change the storyline or something. That line might change something. Mm-hmm. But since you were more prepared, in a second you know that this line will affect four places in my script. In the beginning, here, here, this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's going to work or it's not going to work. So very quickly mm-hmm. you can say, oh, no, don't use this. This is not going to work. This mm-hmm. is just be funny, but it's not connected to the storyline. Mm-hmm. So, so very quickly you can take those decisions. But uh, I leave the film open right till the end. That anything mm-hmm. good which can come to the film, why stop it? Uh, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people who, for them, uh, 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 a script is very sacrosanct. That okay, this is the script. Mm-hmm. This is the line. Everything has been taught. Every word. Everything has been taught, and that's why it's there. It's to a particular mm-hmm. pacing. It's to a particular rhythm that you don't want to increase the length. So stick to the line. But uh, I feel it's better to keep it. open and then be able to navigate okay do this much don't do this much do this much and some wonderful lines come up you know uh because some actors work from that thing they want to contribute to the like arshad yeah. used to do that often i remember mm-hmm. so many lines in uh, 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 munna bhai would come from arshad uh, mm-hmm. uh, some people like to be sticking to the script so which is fine mm-hmm. and uh, similarly in editing see what happens you've conceived a story mm. you've gone and shot to that vision sometimes mm. that scene can rise from the page and become better than mm. how you conceived sometimes it might not rise to that this thing mm. now then it's your job at the editing stage to make sure that what you had conceived it's translating like that so in mm. editing it's almost rewriting actually you're constantly rewriting sometimes mm. you do crazy things you cut to a long shot and change the lines also Mm-hmm. where you can't see it. to be able to communicate what you wanted to and it's not coming you get another thought and mm-hmm. a lot of actually rewriting uh by rewriting i don't exactly means that changing lines mm-hmm. but creating the impact you wanted to create uh with that particular scene mm-hmm. happens at that stage mm-hmm. like uh to give you an example uh you you all might remember three idiots uh mm-hmm. so there was a the character joy lobo who kills himself mm-hmm. who commits suicide we had created that uh, little drone and mm-hmm. uh, he died he kills himself and the drone mm-hmm. from that you discover so before that the film was about these three characters mm-hmm. and at one point i was cutting to this new character who comes mm-hmm. in and talks to baman that uh, to the mm-hmm. <clears throat> director of that place that i don't have enough time to submit my assignment and all that so every time in the edit i felt you know i'm i'm taking the audience through the lives of these three characters and suddenly a new character is coming in so it's throwing me off it's throwing me off for months i felt during editing and then the solution was very simple you might not even uh, realize the impact of it but i feel subconsciously it made an impact was in the voice over since the since madhavan was narrating the story i just added one line hmm. before this scene before that you saw amir as an unusual guy rancho is an mm-hmm. unusual guy who takes a bath if there's no water in the hostel he takes a bath outside he he's creating gadgets he's doing this he's an he doesn't sit in the class he'll mm-hmm. sit into any class very things he gets education mm-hmm. so that is being defined and then i added just one line ki ek aur tha jo uske jaisa tha mm-hmm. this was another character who was like him and you come to this character so immediately what has happened you push this character up and you are curious now oh mm-hmm. was this character was like him it's a very mm-hmm. simple line but that happened it wasn't mm-hmm. in the script it would happen and editing you get more curious to watch if that line is not there you'll still watch it but it'll be like mm-hmm. another character being introduced and you wonder okay now where the story is going this new character is coming so these are very very subtle small things in editing you do lots of these things to uh, uh mm-hmm. because editing to me is magic editing can really create magic it's more of mm-hmm. action reaction sometimes somebody is saying something the reaction of what is being said on another person's face is so much more stronger mm. uh, you know how people put laughter tracks on stand up comedies and this thing to make you so yeah. similarly if somebody is saying something the reaction of the other person if he's crying or something can evoke the same emotion so mm. lot of his manipulating there to get the emotion you want in the audience yeah no that's uh, that's very very insightful um you know i know anand is is hopping and jumping on the other end to ask a question uh, anand do you want to quickly 
hop on yeah, yeah. thanks so much for allowing me to hop on and ask a question so sir uh, it seems to me from you know the way you described your <laughs> process as a filmmaker that in your in the early parts of your career like when you were thinking about munna bhai you were more focused on the art of filmmaking and then as you have progressed in your so my question is you know as you have progressed and succeeded in your career how have you sort of managed the tension between you know pursuing and channeling your art through your films versus thinking about the economics and the business of your films you know how how do you ba- balance that and and manage that tension yeah so uh, you know i don't think i've uh, changed anything in terms of uh, uh, I, i as i said i would not compromised or uh done anything to change my filmmaking i still do what i believe in i still go with my gut i have not said okay this is going to commercially work so let me work on this thing because that would be a recipe for disaster i i have not uh said this film is working so let's pick up some elements from here or this film has uh i have not even gone and made a munna bhai because um, uh, uh, all business sense says that i should do a munna bhai 3 it's it's going to be a, it's been last film was 16 17 years back any production house with any little bit of common sense would say ki you can make five six more munna bhai but i didn't do it because i didn't have a script i have five unwritten or half written i would say munna bhai scripts lying with me but since it's not at par with the earlier ones or better than that i've not gone and made it so so mm-hmm. i'm not bending down to any commercial pressures like that that uh this will succeed because i know even if i make a bad munna bhai possibly people will go in initially and watch it and will do great amount of business but no so i'm not mm-hmm. succumb to that pressure at all what i meant by under uh, there is a little pressure which is i guess it's my own pressure you perceive it because uh, uh see my earlier film when i made munna bhai there was no hardly any budget hardly any money to uh, was needed to make that film i made it very very cheaply so now as you grow a film like uh uh film start become have start to becoming expensive for me to make uh <clears throat> bigger actors coming in everything so you don't want somebody is putting in the money to lose money so those mm-hmm. pressures come in that okay i have to make films which not only refer and also you want uh, to make money so that uh, uh uh as i said in munna bhai there was no pressure on me of making a hit film nobody knew me So I said, okay, it doesn't matter. I have to make a film. I have to be happy. Then, you know, you then businesses start coming in. So, so you obviously want your film to do well. But I'm saying that compromise is not there. That okay, now to make a successful, I'm going to do something which I perceive as being successful. I've gone and done completely the films from my gut. I felt like making a PK, which would be. possibly a stupid decision for anybody who would want to make a film on you know godman and religion and it doesn't make sense where are the songs in switzerland there it doesn't make any commercial sense or like you know munna bhai it was film about gandhi i remember till the film release the distributors were very worried that this is making a film with gandhi who will watch it and so i have gone with my gut and made films which uh, uh, make me happy I've been holding my question, but it is a huge Please, tangent. Don't hold it. You said. <laughs> don't hold it, Samar. <laughs> If I may take the liberty to say, go for it. <laughs> I, actually wrote, I actually wrote a paper on this last semester, but I often wonder about, and I feel like this is going to become a more important conversation over the next few years in in India. Is this is this uh, responsibility of filmmakers, right? Where, um, like you said, that you know you don't. there's no conscious effort at your end to spark this national and global conversation whether it's a pk or three idiots it happens organically because everyone's experienced it in some way mm. but when those conversations happen again and again when you come up with your next and when you've succeeded so much is there is there a restraint at the end that uh, you know the, the of on on the responsibility as a filmmaker is it, do you give it more thought uh, than you um, sort of maybe initially thought about I'm just curious what your thoughts are on responsibility of filmmakers and in, in in what they showcase because that that seems to be a conversation that is increasing increasing with with the rise of OTT and um, films that come on there. Uh, 
see i in, in the first place never uh, uh, thought i was doing anything irresponsibly i my i didn't in, mean it that way so ha so no so i i've never given it a thought like that but yes when you say it i do feel uh, uh there is a responsibility at some level there is a responsibility in terms of uh, what you showcase you don't really need to go over the top uh, uh, like uh, i have nothing against people abusing uh, 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 in cinema i'm i'm okay with it but sometimes when you see in certain series you feel it's just going over the top mm. completely out of control because you think there's no censorship on the ott platforms let's take in or or in terms of violence going to the other extreme because you think there's no censorship so in fact that i think puts you off that puts you off as i said nothing i think abusing is superb you do it in real life it, it communicates so much <laughs> there's so much of love and affection and so much is said in one abuse so so there's nothing wrong with it but when every second sentence becomes like that you say oh, just because there's a liberty to do it you're going and doing it which will eventually cause problems for you which will bring in censorship and which will cause problems for all of us so yeah at, at that level you do have to act responsibly in terms of mm. what you showcase you you can't be completely responsible and go and do anything you want mm. Mm. i may I just quickly clarify i didn't mean to say that you make films with responsibility i no, just no, no. <laughs> i was just curious about your about your perspective on it yeah. um let's just quickly take uh, one or two more audience questions i'm sure you get this this in every interview you give but there's somebody by here by the name of kk in that the the film world has become more competitive than ever and what advice do you have to to young aspiring folk wanting to enter the industry as uh, as writers directors or even actors Uh, and I'm, uh, maybe if you can talk a little about your journey also you you came in and from your very first film you've been a superstar director um, i think your your thought process no i feel i feel this is the best time for anybody to uh, uh, get into cinema because okay. uh, there's so much being done you know uh, uh, you have cinema you have television you have ott platforms and so many of them right now everybody in the industry is busy the moment you're trying to find an actor a technician or actors you would see they were lost earlier are back into the reckoning everybody is working so i think this is the best time to uh, uh, be into this world mm. and it's also the best time to be noticed because uh, if you talk about my time when we came uh it was a problem to convince somebody that you can make a film how do you convince somebody to make a film Mm-hmm. uh there were no resources to like if you wanted to make a short film you say okay i want to make a short film and show it to the world there were no resources everybody everything was being shot on cinema film mm-hmm. was expensive to get how do you get a film how do you get a camera mm-hmm. where do you go and edit where do you do sound there was no way you could make a short film the people used to struggle they would go and you know beg mm-hmm. from uh, uh producers that once you're shooting your 20 feet is left in the magazine which you throw away give it to us so people would collect this 20 20 feet 20 30 feet and put it all together make a film uh, like that then even if you make it how do you show it to mm. a prospective producer you have to call them up it's up to him if he gives you the time now mm. i think is the best time you can pick up your phone make the film you want to make you can edit it on your laptop you can learn how to edit you can learn how to do sound all the resources are available on the internet for you and the best thing is you can showcase it on mm. Uh, on internet there are so many platforms available put it on youtube put it on other platforms put it on instagram showcase your talent onto it somebody will spot you and reach out to you we mm-hmm. see so many talented people and their work on that thing and we say who is this guy call them so so it's become far more easier to reach out to people showcase your work rather than making an attempt to reach them they reach out to you so if you really like your cinema if you really love cinema you are passionate about it you are obsessed with it go out and make a short film i keep saying people go and make something and that's the best way to learn make it make mistakes learn it do something good put it out there people will find you <laughs> i i i recall something that james cameron said very simply he's like go take a camera shoot whoever your sister family yourself put it out there 
you're a director then and everything else from there is just negotiating your fees so <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I quite true. i quite like that quote <laughs> but uh, i know you sort of give a lot of one final question from me and uh, mm-hmm. this is i know you give a lot of time to to what you write and you have to see that you know whether it's whether you would like to see it and whether you would like to make a film on it if it's coming from a place of honesty but can you talk about some of the causes or some of the subjects that are close to your heart that you would just like to see out there whether you make it or not whether somebody else makes it over the next 5 7 8 years what would you like to see indian cinema produce that is important to our to our society over the next decade see i see i feel this is actually as i said that's the best time at the moment and uh, if you look at an in cinema a lot of different kind of stuff is happening unlike if you look in the 90s uh, most cinema was very similar to each other romantic films or action films hero heroine typical objections from families or or villain and now cinema has changed all kinds of films are being made in india actually all kinds uh uh small to big to different stories so i think we shouldn't first of all i don't think we should restrict ourselves to one particular sort of i think let people it's a massive industry we make the maximum amount of films so many new filmmakers are coming coming up with different stories different stories from smaller towns and uh, uh lots is happening and also i guess what has happened in the pandemic period two years sitting at home people have worked a lot more on the scripts a lot more has happened i got this opportunity to be sitting here and i've worked on couple of scripts and uh, hopefully i will take less time to make between films uh so i think in the future you will see in the next two years you'll see better or i would say varied kind of cinema coming out people are delving into real life story so much more now mm. uh, uh because also what has happened na? when you write fiction when you write from your mind when you write from experience how much can you write uh, hundreds of cinema has happened and uh, you know everything that had to be said has been said it's a variation of that so when you dig into real life stories you pick up so they have amazing content they have great anecdotes from their life stories so a lot of people are picking from there I mean, either making them as biopics or making uh, uh, fictionalized versions of that but i think it's good time for it's good time for you'll see a lot of variety and uh, i think you can't fix on one say okay this is the kind of cinema i want to see or this sort of cinema i want to make stories different stories excite you at different times for me also when i look back uh, uh, with times you also change as a person uh, what excited me then might not excite me now uh, uh, it might be different you grow as a person with Uh, so so things change so, so so i might be able to do certain things which i at that point wouldn't have i would have wanted a lot of fun kind of film and i might want to do something different so that's it <laughs> it's a, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful note to close on watch out for the cinema that will come in excited we can't wait to watch uh, what you're coming out with i don't know if we can speak about it at all um uh, but but no thank you so much for giving us your time such an honor uh and uh, no, absolute I pleasure hope... absolute pleasure talking to you all thank you so much sir and uh <laughs> to all the audiences and participants thank you for your questions thank you for tuning in at wherever you are from around the world and thank you for your questions and again so thank you we really appreciate your time thank you so much so much thank you so so if i can just take the liberty to share a small anecdote my best yes, among my best memories with my family was back in 2003 i was 11 years old at the time i'm giving away my age by saying this was when we <laughs> actually went and watched munna bhai in the theater i remember as a kid i wanted to watch some other movie that had come out that weekend and my parents were like nahi iske liye chalte hain and i remember hmm. you know i laughed so much in that movie that 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 day still stuck with me in my memory and it's such an honor to have you know hosted you today oh, and oh, to have shared this uh, screen screen with you so i should say your parents have good taste and huh? they took you to the right place <laughs> 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 that you, was so wonderful anand thank you yeah. thank you so much for your kind words else it's actually wonderful i would love to come there someday let's see things open we would up. love to come there yeah yeah 
it's been on my mind so we'll 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 organize a we'll organize a discussion we have a vibrant indian mm-hmm. community not just at harvard mm-hmm. i know i know that's what is our, fascinating to see so many indians there we'll, we'll 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 host a we'll host a, yeah. we'll host yeah. a conversation for you here <laughs> thank you so Great. much sir. i really appreciate it <laughs> thank you so much all the best take care thank you anand thank, thank you rali take care all the best thank you bye guys thank you bye